you've obviously come across the work of, of Tom Holland and his book yeah. Dominion and yeah. uh, the, the rest is history, history podcast with Dominic Sandbrook. They've just had these two episodes back to back. Uh, they've talked about Jesus Christ, the mystery, and then Jesus Christ, the history. Now you've had a chance uh, to listen. What, what, what are your top couple of uh, takeaways from these two episodes? Well, I mean, I really like the fact that, um, you know, uh, Tom's very clear on the existence of Jesus and, uh, you know, positive um, in broad outline uh, towards uh, the Gospels. And um, I particularly appreciate his um, recognition of the brilliance of Jesus' teaching and the way that the um, the best way to explain what we have is that Jesus actually comes out with his teachings, not his followers. That that doesn't really explain stuff at all. I think his uh, recognition also that Jesus takes a deliberate decision to go to Jerusalem, knowing that this is likely to uh, lead to his death, is is a, just a great um, insight, uh, even put from secular history, uh, that here is a remarkable individual who... Uh, is not thinking uh, like so many of us do about themselves. He's actually uh, thinking about what's right and thinking about others. And uh, to have that concluded by someone working from the presuppositions of secular history, I think is a great thing to have. Yeah, and and amazing that that sort of putting together. There's the genius of Jesus. There's also his exalted opinion of himself. Yeah, yeah. And there's also the lowliness of what he does, riding a donkey into Jerusalem to embrace his death. Yeah. So his his, his self understanding, you know, uh, Tom would say he believes he's the one who's going to call the world to account, uh, you know, and judge people. He he writes himself in as the the um, you know the king in the parables, but also is prepared to. Um, go to Jerusalem and be silent um, before the authorities um, uh, so he doesn't defend himself. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what a beautiful combination in, in any person. But um, he also he also owns the fact that he he said he thinks of himself as both Grinch and the Scrooge rolled up into one person uh, because he does drop the bombshell in their Christmas uh, episode that he doesn't think that uh, events unfolded like they do in uh, Luke chapter two or Matthew chapter two in terms of the Christmas event. So we will get into that because, um, Peter, you, you do believe that um, uh, Christmas happens the way that Luke and, and Matthew kind of describe. So we'll get into that a little bit. Um, but I just wanted to um, ask you about one aspect of the podcast where Tom finishes by uh, talking about whether historians can also be people of faith, whether people of faith can also be historians. And you don't have to be a Christian to accept that because Nietzsche said that, you know, Nietzsche said, Jesus is the strangest person who ever lived. You mentioned Occam's razor before. I mean, if you're using Occam's razor, the simplest explanation is that Jesus was the son of God. I mean, uh, historians would make. Well, do historians make that claim? Do other historians who would end their book by saying no? They don't. So Stephen Jay Gould said famously said that there are rival magisteria, the magisteria of science of religion, and I guess historians would capture it in similar terms that you know that history and religion are rival magisteria. Basically, you know, so so Gibbon um, in the uh, back in the eighteenth century, you know, he 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 articulated this very well. He said the theologian may indulge the pleasing task of describing religion as she descended from heaven, arrayed in her native purity. A more melancholy duty is imposed on the historian. I mean, I think that historians do not accept supernatural explanations. They may yeah. be Christian. I mean, there's nothing to stop a, 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 a historian being a Christian or believing in the supernatural. But I think when they come to write history, by and large, they don't adduce supernatural explanations. Yeah. And I don't think that you need supernatural explanations to explain Jesus and the emergence of Christianity. Now, just first as a sense check, um, would, would you agree at that, at that point that there, there are no sort of historians that would, would make that conclusion? Well, I, I think there are people who are obviously who are professional historians who believe Jesus rose from the dead. But the um, question more is, do they conclude that as a historian? And I think sometimes that, in a sense, history is uh, set up a bit like a game, like a hedge fund. You know, a hedge fund, the hedge fund manager is supposed to win whichever way the market goes. And I think that history as a discipline can be set up with a sort of certain artificiality so that it wouldn't be able to recognise a miracle if it hit the historian in the face. Because... Uh, According to the parameters of, 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 of modern history departments, uh, miracles are simply outside of the ability to 
um, for a historian to investigate. Uh, and so uh, that, I think, is where, of course, your input affects your output. So if you're not allowed miraculous input in the first place, uh, it, you know, it, it, it can't, um, you know, be in the output. I'd also uh, talk in some sense about the sensitivity of, of your detector. So, you know, I've got some bathroom scales and I can put a toothbrush on the bathroom scales or a, a raise or even my entire shower gel and it won't register as having a weight. But when I get on, it will me measure that I do. Yeah. Uh, and so it just simply if um, the instrument you're using is not capable of detecting a miracle, um, then you're not going to. And I think that's one of the problems about um, the way the the discipline is set up it's a good discipline it's it's great but re recognize it's a discipline rather than reality yes uh tom then goes on to talk about um stephen jay gould speaking about the science and faith kind of issue and stephen jay gould is famous for saying that they are non-overlapping magisteria mm -hmm. and uh, tom in uh, the podcast talks about rival magisteria which i think is is interesting because I, I i don't read stephen jay gould as saying that they are rivals science and faith but mm -hmm. I, I think rivals uh kind of assumes a turf war whereas non-overlapping kind of assumes that, that they can get on with their own respective businesses and, and leave one another alone. Um, do, do, you, do you see, uh, are there rival magisteria between, between history yeah. and faith? I do remember hearing um, Gould in the flesh uh, when, when he uh, came to Cambridge Pact, Pact Room, um, and very much uh, you know, the emphasis was uh, these are non-overlapping. I'm not talking about that area, but I think he gave a primacy to his own. Um, uh, what I would want to say is that um, knowledge needs to be integrated. One of the things that you don't get from science is any values. Um, science can't even tell you that um, science is a worthwhile enterprise um, so or worth investing any money in. So I would say it's, it's about the right sort of um, way of treating information. And the, the information that's coming us to in, in, in the Bible um, – is coming um, in the form of, of signal and words. Um, and it's uh, miracles are not meaningless, random, magical events. They actually right. come in you know, a semiotic pattern. They come in a pattern of meaning. And just as we are um, um, able to detect meaning in each other's words and each other's expressions and so on, uh, I think that's... Um, what you've got in the Christian scriptures is communication from God in a way that we are able to um, detect and respond to. Uh, and that includes the miracles. So it's it's um, coming at it from the right angle. Um, a big category in uh, the Bible is the category of testimony. Uh, and we as humans are uh, very much our entire society is built on testimony. That's how we buy products. That's how we eat um, and so it's using that category rather than the artificial parameters, if I can say, of professional history uh, mm -hmm. that enables you to respond. Yes. And, yeah, the miracles of Jesus are emphatically not random, freaky, supernatural stuff, uh, but like meaningful things such a mm -hmm. such that um you know this sort of pre-pauline um teaching that he received in in 1 corinthians chapter 15 which um i think tom sort of references w without without naming it um in in the episodes um what was handed to me is of first importance that christ died according to the scriptures and that he was raised according to the scriptures mm -hmm. and so that the Whatever is happening, the, the point is not simply there's a freaky occurrence, but that there is, yeah, it's, it's it, according to the pattern of the scriptures, it's, it's making sense of the story. There's a meaning and significance to it that, that goes beyond, oh, uh, you know, the, there's some kind of supernatural event going on. Would you, would you say that's, that's yeah, somewhere yeah. in the book? So it's yeah. important uh, when you think of um, miracles in, in the Bible, not to think this is a... Uh, just another claim of paranormal, you know, uh, weird stuff. It's actually coming within the whole context of message. Yes, yes. Such that when you get to the resurrection, they, they talk in the podcast about there are alternative explanations for why it is that the apostles had the experience of meeting the risen Christ. And they go through, you know, even naming magic mushrooms and, and, and those sorts of, you know, mass hallucination, you know, ideas. Um, 
Is there a sense of that sort of Sherlock Holmes thing that, you know, once you've eliminated the impossible, what you're left with, however improbable, must be the truth? Is, is there something to that? Well, I think there's a, a difficulty about the whole category of improbable. I mean, what is mm. improbable? Mm. Um, is uh, Would we say that the... Um, development uh, of um, conscious things from non-conscious things is improbable. How how improbable mm. is that? Or or life from non-life? And so I'd, I'd want to say that um, lots of people may have what seem to other groups improbabilities within their um, system, um, but the, 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 the Christian b- belief set hangs together. It hangs together in this person of, of Jesus um, who does have a very good story end uh, that corresponds to the beginning of the story in the Jewish scriptures. So you can go to a synagogue, look at the opening chapters of their Bible um, and and find this scene at a a tree and, you know, death coming into the world. um, And um, the climactic scene in the New Testament is a scene at a tree uh, giving life um, uh, through someone giving their death. Uh, 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 and, And so I'd say... Already, that's that's quite unusual that you've got these different parts of this collection of books, the Bible, which hang together at, at least at a superficial level, at least at a superficial level. And they were not written by the same people. So you, you've got some sort of plot line uh, arc which goes together with Jesus, um, which also I mean, it's interesting to hear um, Tom Holland acknowledge so readily that. Jesus must be brilliant because of all these different things that are attributed to him. It's really hard to explain that as just coming from the um, uh, his followers. So you start getting these uh, unusual things clustering around this person, Jesus, that you know make make him uh, really exceptional uh, in terms of you know someone who, again, according to Tom Holland, uh, was prepared to go to Jerusalem knowing this would cost him his life, uh, but it was the right thing to do. Um, uh, so I, I think it's uh, it, it's very interesting uh, to put these things together.